Sky's the limit. Sky Sealstone is the limit, maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, looking at the prizes for both of these players. Cameron is going to be on uh, Gardevoir EX and is playing a similar list to Tort. So it's kind of a rematch, uh, at least decks-wise, but there's a little bit of additions that for Sealstone you see in the prize cards up on the top right, along with a Pidgeot V. A mm -hmm. uh, little combination to get use Star Alchemy when you don't need uh, Sky Sealstone for the matchup. Yeah, well, as you said, Alex did change decks. There's no more Alolan Vulpix. Uh, so we'll be bringing a Lost Box deck this oh. time. And uh, <laughs> this was the deck I was excited to see. You know, I mentioned it you know, during the intro to the show, the Lost Box deck with Galarian Moltres. So we are going to see perhaps some Fiery Wrath in this game. Uh, but looks like Cameron's going to start things off. Fog Crystal is going to be able to search for a basic Psychic Pokemon or Psychic Energy, one of the better cards to utilize in this Gardevoir deck. Yeah, it's uh, really similar to Netball that we had during the Sun and Moon era, which was you know, grass basic Pokemon or grass energy card. But it's better because uh, yeah. Psychic Pokemon yeah. are better. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, perfect starting Pokemon as well for Cameron. Mew, got that great Mysterious Tail ability. Um, yeah, looks like going straight for the Zacian V, maybe favoring getting a turn two attack off in this matchup if possible, and, uh, you know, he can use that Roar of the Sword to start powering it up. If he can get a turn to, uh, was it Storm Slash, get a knockout, put some pressure on, that can be um, a good way to approach this matchup, but, of course, you're always hoping for that battle VIP pass, so here we go. We'll find it off the top six right here. Don't worry yourself. <laughs> All right, a little bit close. Fog uh, Crystal. Uh, yeah, it's it's half a battle VIP pass. Yeah, yeah. I mean, two fog crystals is basically like one battle VIP pass. So, so two fog crystal equals one battle VIP pass. Is what yeah, you're saying? Only on the first turn. Yeah. Only on the first turn. All right. <laughs> uh, after that, uh, fog crystal is way better than battle <laughs> VIP pass. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is you know a little bit of a rough start. This, it, I, I think we were all used to seeing Tord play this deck, where <laughs> it felt like every game it's like. His bench was full on turn one. Uh, this is a deck that really needs to get a lot of Ralts into play early on so that you can evolve to Curlia, start using Refinement, you know, draw through your deck quickly. If you don't get those down early and don't have that ability to draw through your deck quickly, uh, this deck can be really clunky. You need a lot of Ralts in play. Yeah, well, it is consistent because you're able to Refinement all the cards that don't help in the matchup a way to draw just even more cards turn after turn. And you're going to have to kind of do a little bit of work with just two Ralts in play to start things off. Meanwhile, Alex does have that Comfey in the active spot, finds another one with his own Fog Crystal. And we're going to start things off here with a couple flower selectings. Yep. Uh, I mean, if you know, you've been watching any streams at all in like the last, I don't know, six months, you're going to be used to what we're going to see next. Uh, lots of flower selecting, Colrus's experiment, cards going into the Lost Zone. Um, you know, this is something we've grown accustomed to seeing, so, uh, you know, enjoy, Get used enjoy to the it, ride, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get used uh, to it. But, you know, as we go through this first turn, I do want to talk about the deck that Alex is playing. Uh, I have seen this one pop up a lot in online events recently. I think it's a really interesting variation of these Lost Box decks. Uh, one of the biggest things that jumps out to you is no battle VIP pass. You know, that is a four of in every Lost Zone deck that's been played in forever. <laughs> and having zero is pretty wild. Um, relying mostly on Nest Ball, Fog Crystal, things like that. And, uh, you know, drawing through your deck to, to find the cards you need. But it's really interesting that... You know, Alex completely foregoing battle VIP pass, but look, you know, you just nest ball and you fog crystal and you yeah. flower selecting and you chorus and you just get the cards anyway. And then you don't have to have battle VIP pass in your deck for after turn one. Yeah, exactly. It does make your flower selectings a little bit harder later on, I guess, and it's the trade off that some people can do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the other Lost Zone decks do usually play like Lost Vacuum, and you can kind of throw away your extra VIP passes to the Lost Vacuum. Uh, looks like there's not that option here either, so 
Yeah, even more reason to not want to clog your deck with cards that are really useless after the first turn of the game. And oh, Escape Rope will allow Cameron to send out Zashi and V, which will allow a turn one attack. But it also lets Alex attack with Cramorant on the first turn. So, yeah. I don't know, a bit of a trade off. I think both we, players are okay with this. <laughs> we, we actually see another escape rope from this flower selecting. So, Alex could play another one and take out the Mew from the Cramorant. True. Yep. And um, just like that, we are at four cards in the loss zone for Alex here. So, with just the retreat for the turn, we'll be able to spit innocently. And it's looking like. 110 damage on that Zashian V. Yep, and with that darkness energy going to the discard pile, uh, you know, alarm should be going off in your head if you're Cameron. Like, hold on, that, <laughs> that usually isn't in that deck. <laughs> what's going on here? You're um, trying to attack with, with Drapion? Like, what's going on? <laughs> uh, so yeah, you do have to be aware now. You know, Gardevoir EX is somewhat of a safe attacker against the Lost Zone decks. It's got so much HP. Uh, and, you know, some of the Mirage Gate builds can charge up Drapion V to knock out Gardevoir, but for the most part, it's a safe thing to attack with. But Galarian Moltres being a Darkness type, I mean, it can knock out Gardevoir EX for two prize cards. So that is now something you have to be aware of if you uh, for the rest of the game if you're Cameron. All right, Kyle, you have missed the turn of top deck Curlia, yep. refinement into Worker. Worker, get another Curlia. Yeah. <laughs> All right. This is insane. <laughs> That's how the deck works, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's how we draw it up. Yeah. I mean, you just draw cards to draw the cards you need that draw you more cards. And then uh, eventually you just have everything. So I heard you like drawing cards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With uh, this Ultra Ball, we'll be able to search for Pokemon, grabbing that Manaphy, which is going to be very helpful against that Moonlight Shirk and from Radiant Greninja on Alex's side of things. Absolutely. Um... Yeah, I mean, we've seen it a lot now in the Pokemon TCG. I think Zorark GX was the big one. With trade, you know, discard a card, draw two cards. Um, and then for a while, there were lots of different decks that ran the Sinchino, Make Do, same thing. Uh, even for a while, we had Pidgeotto with Airmail. You know, look at the top two, take one. So this kind of engine has been around for a while now where it's, uh, you know, just get multiples of that Pokemon that can draw you through your deck quickly. It's been yep. very successful. We don't talk about Lipard here. But, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> got, got played in uh, no, Turnitus no, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Alex is going to start things off. Concealed cards, Good drawing cheap cards. <laughs> Good in cube. <laughs> <laughs> Flower selecting a couple more times, getting rid of an energy and a mirage gate here. Six in the loss zone now. Still not at that Magic 7 number for Mirage Gate, though. Yeah, I don't know how much it matters. You can just Cramorant and spit innocently and collect your two prize cards. I mean, that's, that's... boring, though. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is boring, but, uh, you know, I've heard that boring is better. You know, winning is exciting. Uh, I'll agree to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> Retreat from that water energy spit innocently will grab two prize cards for Alex now, and it is a very good position to have not really committing anything down already having six in the loss zone you take two prizes already hmm. uh yeah and level ball i'm guessing we're gonna see a third curlia so now cameron will be able to draw six additional cards this turn all three of these refinement abilities uh, of course you do need to um discard cards to draw those cards sometimes the cards you have to throw away are painful. You saw boss's orders go away earlier. Uh, you do have some cards to, you know, recover, things like Palpat to get some of that stuff back. But, you know, sometimes it can be painful, especially when you have these small hand sizes. But we might be seeing Cameron just using Mysterious Tail to try to find, like, a battle VIP pass to throw away. Oh, perfect. Oh, look at that. It's like you can tell the future, Kyle. Yeah. Check this out, Jeremy going to spotlight the card that is going to go straight into the discard pile. <laughs> Perfect. Yes, that is a battle VIP pass that cannot be used, so might as well discard it. Perfect synergy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when, when's the ability like propagation coming back into the, into the card game? Uh, we need a little uh, insight. <laughs> oh, look at that. Drew oh, yeah. another one. Oh, Perfect. 
Where's that circle? You know, <laughs> double level ball. All that right. was a little harder for me to get. <laughs> <laughs> we can use both of those, thin the deck out a little bit more. Maybe discard another Pokemon found off it. I don't know if there's anything even left to find <laughs> with this level ball, right? Uh, oh, there's a Curlia. Okay. Yeah, there's one more Ralts in hand, and there's a Curlia. I guess it's a question of do you really need four of these? <laughs> yes. Yeah, <laughs> always. <laughs> as many cards as possible. Just yep. give them to me. Uh, but yeah, things going very smoothly. You know, I thought maybe with only a couple Ralts on the first turn, it might be a, a rough start for Cameron, but nope. Like you said, uh, last turn just drew into everything in the proper order. There's and a Gardevoir. Drawn everything in the wrong order this time. No supporter to speak of, but you got all your Gardevoir well, in hand. Both Gardevoir EX and that Shining Arcana Gardevoir. Yeah, I mean, who needs supporters when you already have enough Psychic in your discard? And uh, yeah, you got that other Gardevoir. And just uh, clarifying which uh, Curlia got evolved this turn. Yep. And All right. there's that Shining Arcana. Looking at the top two cards, you can attach any oh, energy found. On. Wow. Okay. Uh, That's pretty good. <laughs> sure. Cameron seems to like it. <laughs> and Alex is just like, oh, yeah, congratulations. <laughs> All right. Now so, we start attacking. Yeah, and now we see, you know, this really strong ability from Gardevoir EX allows you to, as often as you like during your turn, attach a Psychic Energy card from your discard pile to one of your Psychic Pokemon. Uh, you do have to put two damage counters on it when you do that, but uh, that is a price definitely worth paying. And yeah, there should only be two damage yep. counters on that. <laughs> from the Shining Arcana. Uh, it is just unlimited energy acceleration. Uh, it costs you your HP, but you completely bypass any one per turn attachment rule here. Once those energy are in the discard pile, they just keep flowing for the rest of the game. And here we go. Gardevoir is going to use Miracle Force. Um, now, there's only two prize cards taken for Cameron, so the Galarian Moltres does not have a window here to get a knockout. Uh, once you hit three prize cards, that's when it starts to get dangerous. So this is the perfect turn to attack with Gardevoir. All right. We're going to have to see if it's able to stick. At least for now, Alex is going to be able to get to that Magic 7 number with just one flower selecting, and we're going to start seeing some of the gates open up and uh, <laughs> Mirage gates being played. Just depends on what attacker Alex actually wants to go with. Yeah, I think if you could choose, uh, you would get 10 cards into the Lost Zone and use Sableye this turn. Uh, you want to do some sort of attack that is you know, getting you closer to winning the game. Again, if you can... Uh, wait until your opponent has taken three prize cards. Then the Galarian Moltres can come in and uh, deliver that one-hit knockout to Gardevoir EX. So if you can do some sort of attack that is knocking out one of your opponent's benched Pokemon this turn, that's a way for you to kind of keep up your momentum while delaying knocking out this Gardevoir EX. I don't know if it's an attack, but it's more of a combination. Uh, <laughs> escape Rope will... Uh Hopefully bring up a Pokemon that Alex can knock out with something like that Cramorant off that flower selecting. Gets rid of the Colorus' experiment. That yeah, means there there's another Colorus' yeah. experiment in there. <laughs> yep. Alex kind of nice shrugging like, what the? <laughs> <laughs> well, found another one. All right. Yep. Now, we do see the Kyogre in the five cards here for Colorus' experiment. Uh, we do see Manaphy on board already for Cameron, so... This could be a situation where Alex looks at the matchup and says, you know what, um, Moltres is enough to carry me to victory. I don't need this Kyogre. Um, but it is annoying sometimes to be like, this is one of my win conditions for this deck. Do I have to send it to the Lost Zone and kind of limit my options for the rest of the game? And it's looking like Alex might value the... Oh, for a second, it was the Echoing Horn over the Kyogre, but Kyogre is the option right. to put into the hand. So hopefully... Lying down a Lost Mine, getting rid of Manaphy, and then you can clean up with that Aqua Storm. Yeah, I think that would be the ideal turn here. Uh, I think nine are in the Lost Zone now after that Coerces experiment. This will be card number 10. Psychic Energy found off that Flower Selecting. Switch card in hand. Already had the Psychic Energy in hand as well to go along with that Sableye. Yeah, this is a double knockout, right? The Mew already has... Oh, damage it on does, it. yes. That's rough. Yep. 
One of the downsides of Psychic Embrace. I was wondering if Cameron should have, uh, you know, used one of the regular attachments onto the Mew just to avoid damaging it. Well, Mew to the active spot here, but it's not going to matter. Sableye with its Lost Mine ready to go, able to spread 12 damage counters in any way Alex chooses. Yep, and Alex has about 20 cards in hand at this point, has not been disrupted a single time yet. Haven't seen a judge. Uh, we could be entering into Roxanne territory shortly, but uh, you got to think if Alex's hand goes unchecked. I mean, just look at how many cards are here. <laughs> That's a lot of cards. It's, it's, it's almost bigger than his deck at this point. <laughs> Looks like four on the active Mew to knock it out, seven to knock out the Manaphy, one mm -hmm. left being put on <laughs> that Gardevoir EX. And one you pick, I don't care. <laughs> Now Cameron is going to have to figure out something to do, and it's probably going to start with the Roxanne. Got that Luminion V in hand already. Oh, true. Uh, yeah, I mean, you have to disrupt your opponent's hand here, right? There's just so many cards. There's so many disastrous things that can happen. Uh, there may be a temptation to use that Miriam and get back Manaphy and try to block some sort of Aqua Storm thing, but... I think it's just more effective to limit your opponent's hand size. You know, it's way tougher for them to pull off some big combo if they only start the turn with two cards. So you're saying Miriam's a trap. <laughs> yep. Don't play it. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I prefer Clara personally for that spot, but um, Miriam's got its merits, I suppose. That is a very interesting talking point, too, because Cl Clara, you just get all the cards directly to your hand. Yeah. You, you don't have to try to find it again. And uh, with this deck, if you don't thin your deck out to basically nothing, the, the Miriam's going to be a little harder for you to get your cards. Yeah. Of course, Miriam can get five Pokemon back. So if you really needed five Pokemon, obviously that's better. But most of the time, you don't need quite that many. All right. So do you see Cresselia? Um, one of these interesting cards that... I think it got a lot of hype early on is like some sort of odd lost box counter. You know, if your opponent starts to spread too much damage, it's a way for you to fire it back at them and kind of heal off your Pokemon. It's also got some synergy with Psychic Embrace. You know, you can damage four of your own Pokemon and then shoot the damage onto a Sableye or a Comfey. Um, I think for the most part, it's fallen out of favor a little bit. You know, it's really awkward with this deck to spread your energy around. You really want it all funneled into one Pokemon so that you can get huge one-hit knockouts with, uh, you know, Brainwave with Gardevoir or use Zashi and V. So it can be really detrimental to kind of strand your energy everywhere. But um, I'm still seeing some play here. Yeah, well, when your opponent doesn't really have big HP Pokemon to take no those knockouts on, you kind of can afford to spread it around a little bit. And there we see... Uh -huh. Oh, Finally, Ro the judge. Oh, Roxanne is prized. Yep. Oh, that's <laughs> probably a good point then. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this is better than nothing, but, you know, leaving your opponent with four cards instead of two is a significant difference. Um, Alex is going to have plenty of resources to work with, but, I mean, you've got to just try something to slow your opponent down at this point. You've got to play to your outs. That's right. That's what I always like to say, and... You have to hope Alex draws five cards that are nothing. <laughs> yeah, plus a flower selecting, plus... No, no, no we're not going to talk about that yet. <laughs> <laughs> plus the, the chorus they always draw. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you have some experience there, huh? <laughs> Four cards found for oh, Cameron. There. Didn't really have anything. There's three on the Gardevoir. Yeah, well, there are lots of... Chorus in Alex's Lost Zone already. Had to throw it away with Flower Selecting. Or discard pile and Lost Zone. Uh, but yeah, it looks like we are going to go with the Cresselia here. Reverse that damage back onto Alex's side. So they are getting spread around quite a bit. You do need to spread to four different Pokemon. Uh, you move two damage counters from each of your Pokemon to one of your opponent's Pokemon. It can be anywhere. So you could go after a benched Pokemon if you'd like. But it looks like just going to go after the Sableye. I think there's some merit in those situations to, you know, hitting a Comfey after you've uh, disrupted your opponent's hand. But, you know, I can also understand thinking you're probably going to lose if your opponent just uses Lost Mine over and over. <laughs> yeah, and it's 
pretty awkward too. Alex just having both of the Sableye in play. You're not really able to take both of them out at the same time. And here we go. Alex is starting to build his hand back up. Interesting choice here between Energy Recycler and Switch Cart. Yep. Uh, and Cresselia is a really annoying card for the Lost Zone deck to deal with early on. It's got 120 HP, so it's just out of range for uh, Cramorant. But once you get to this point, Sableye can just lost mine it for 12 damage counters. So uh, it's much easier to deal with once you've gotten to 10 cards in the Lost Zone. Well, we are way past that point now. <laughs> Flower Selecting finds Poke Gear or Mirage Gate. Another interesting decision. I, I think you have to go with the Mirage Gate just because the gear is not guaranteed. But yeah, it's interesting not if, much. if Alex really thinks that, you know, like finding the last Clara or something is going to be what wins the game, you could value the Poke Gear a little higher. But looks like Mirage Gate is going to be the choice. And there is that Mirage Gate finding the Psychic Energy to attach to the Sableye and a Water Energy to retreat the Comfey. And we're going to have a Lost Mine, most likely taking the knockout on that active Cresselia. Yeah, that's the only knockout you can get on this board. And spreading damage is pointless against Cresselia, so... <laughs> yeah. You go, down to, you go down to one prize card, and you make it so that basically you say, if I power up Moltres next turn, I win. This is where that echoing horn would have been really nice. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Taking you a just got to always keep the Kyogre dream alive, though, you know? Always. Always. A Aqua Storm is such a crazy attack that <laughs> it, it needs to happen. Energy for turn from the hand to that Radiant Greninja. There's that retreat. Lost Mine takes that active knockout. Alex down to one prize card left. Cameron is going to need to do a lot of work to try and survive these next couple of turns. Yeah, that's the brutal part, right? Cameron still has three prize cards. So you take a knockout this turn. You not only need to survive one turn, you need to survive two more turns in order to have a shot at winning this game. Uh, I think Cameron may have been playing to, you know, maybe I'll hit Roxanne off of my prize cards, and that'll give me a shot in this game. But, I mean, this is looking pretty rough. Um, yeah, you need Alex to not do anything for two turns to win this game. Anything can happen in Pokemon. True. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ultra Ball is going to thin the deck out a little bit more for Cameron. Finds that Pidgeot V. Yeah. It's an interesting one. Um, you yeah. know, it's pretty much always free to put that Pokemon on your bench, right? You can always just fly away when you need to. Yeah, it does have the ability to shuffle itself back into the deck and all cards attached to it. Used mostly in combination with that four seal stone in uh, decks, kind of like Lost Box and stuff, but pretty interesting to see in this Gardevoir EX. Yeah, you see uh, Cameron deciding not to bench Radiant Greninja there, maybe paying some respect to a potential Halucha, uh, plus Sableye play to close out the game. Really being cognizant of the fact of, I don't want to give my opponent any easy knockouts to close this game out. Well, after that professor's research... Shining Arcana founds two more cards for the hand. Where's those refinements so you can discard those Battle VIP <laughs> pass? Ah, there's an Ultra Ball. <laughs> Ultra Ball will get rid of both of those cards, and we'll see what the rest of the resources Cameron is working with. Palpad Penny collapsed. It's all right, but you, you got pretty much what you have in play. You got to rely on that. Yeah, I mean, I think the scariest part is there was no hand disruption this turn. Alex got a turn to, you know, build some cards up in hand. And now we're going to see if that Galarian Moltres can come down and maybe close out this game. Let's see. <laughs> Just checking what that last prize card is. <laughs> I, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like Alex's hand is not very strong at the moment, though. There's a Nest Ball. He do get concealed cards, which is nice. But there's really no good attacks here at the moment. Oh, snap. We... we we can Aqua Storm, maybe. <laughs> uh, I don't even know if he's got an energy enhance. I don't no. think he can <laughs> do that. Finds the beach court to retreat into the other comfy. Now, this may actually be like a multiple turn setup plan. Yeah, I don't uh, think there's any more switching outs in the deck. 
Oh, hold on. Is there... I don't think there's any Clara in the deck either. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to play down Galarian Moltres and Mirage Gate to it? Is that, I mean, is that what's going on? Uh, that works. <laughs> <laughs> Beach Court will allow Alex to retreat to Comfey, use another Flower Selecting. Dark Energy, Fog Crystal. That could have been very bad if it was Galarian Moltres. Mm -hmm. And there's just a pat. Oh, okay. <laughs> The checking of the discard pile. It was almost a pass of the turn, and <laughs> honestly, it might be. Uh, there is one more energy you can retreat with and flower selecting yet again. Yep. Yeah, when I... Or no, already retreated with the beach court, so you yeah, can't yeah. do that. Yeah, when I tried to play this deck, uh, it's very difficult to play. There's so many resources you have to manage. Uh, the end of the game is really difficult. Um, there are kind of things that are at odds with each other in this deck. Uh, you know, you want to burn through your deck and get cards in the Lost Zone, but you need cards in your discard pile, and you need to conserve resources to use Galarian Moltres. Um, so sometimes you can run out of steam at the end. The good thing is in some matchups like what happened here, you can build it a big enough of a lead where you can kind of spend some time uh, and set up your final attack to win, but I mean, this is a scary situation for Alex now. It felt pretty comfortable knowing that, you know, you, you had a couple turns to pull this off, but um, now you can look at it and be like, hold on, this actually doesn't look that great for me. His hand is not great. Yeah, not at all. Uh, is going to have to rely on the speech court a lot. And looking at Cameron's hand, we see Collapse Stadium. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, which could get rid of the Kumfe, but more importantly, that beach court forcing Alex to retreat manually. Uh, remember, there's no switching outs Whoa. in the deck left. and We're going to see a that? Miriam here. There's only four cards in the deck. Cameron's going to try to find the Manaphy, I think, <laughs> to no. try to block Aquastorm. Here we go. Oh, found it. All right. <laughs> huh. A little All bit right, So, I mean, obviously this does open up a much easier knockout for Alex? Like, if he plays Boss's Orders, which I don't think he does, but... Plays one. Oh, okay. Like, Boss's Orders knocks out Manaphy now with Cramorant. Uh, getting a Sableye back, Lost Mine, that's game over now, so that's a really risky play. Well, the, the thing is, I don't think Alex has the Sableye available to him with no Clara in the deck. True, but, I mean, yeah, on some level you're kind of guessing the counts in your opponent's mm -hmm. deck, what they have left. Um, and now Cameron trying to figure out what to discard to his own collapse stadium. Alex did decide to throw away the Kyogre now that he saw the Manaphy. So <laughs> this could be a funny thing where now that Alex has thrown away the Kyogre, Cameron goes, oh, well, I'll just throw away the Manaphy that I just got. <laughs> <laughs> I think that makes sense, right? Honestly, yeah. Uh I mean, you was still this, you still lose to Clara anyway. Yeah, was this the biggest brain play? <laughs> Force your opponent to, or like bluff your opponent into discarding the Kyogre so that you can get rid of the liability that is now Manaphy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's going to have to be something because we're coming up on 30 minutes in the game <laughs> yeah, yet <Manaphy>. again. <laughs> yeah, there goes Manaphy. What a, what a crazy play. Wow. And now Cameron does only have one card left in deck, but it's definitely not going to come down to decking out. Uh, you have Pidgeot V, which basically makes it so you never deck out. Uh, but all right, here we do see one more Miracle Force. And, one to uh, one prizes. You know, getting rid of that beach court was huge. Now Alex doesn't have the free pivot into the, the Kumpe, but we do see... Think, was I that another Mirage game. Gate? Yeah, that was another Mirage oh, Gate off goodness. the top. Energy Recycler will put back a couple dark and a couple more energy... And with that, Alex can clean up this game with double Mirage Gate, Fiery Wrath for the uh, knockout. Uh, Not how you draw <laughs> it up, but <laughs> it gets there. Yep. Mirage Gate, Mirage Gate. Uh, the unconventional way <laughs> of powering up Galarian <laughs> Moltres, but there it is. Fiery Wrath for, our, let's see, how much damage is that? 540? A lot. No, yeah, it's a lot. We, we, we <laughs> stop counting after a while because that's how far I can count. But. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you can see Alex kind of breathing a sigh of relief. Like, 
that was one of those games that almost could have gotten away from him. You know, if he doesn't, you know, if he draws like Halucha for the turn instead of that Mirage Gate, maybe that's a game or, you know, one of those that you always hate to feel in your soul. <laughs> or it's like, I had this game absolutely won when something happened where I lost. Uh, but thankfully, Alex doesn't have to experience that right now. <laughs> to be fair, I think it was a little less close than we saw because there was an extra dark energy in Alex's hand. Oh, okay. Could have well. just attached for the turn, but yeah, yeah. We, we like to see the flashy plays <laughs> here. All right. That, that would is, do it, yes. This is round six. Winner gets to go to six and oh. We, we need something cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, that game did take up 30 of our 50 minutes, so quite a lengthy one, but a uh, nice back and forth game. You can see, you know, this does add another layer to the Lost Box deck. Uh, I feel like a lot of them, especially like the Greninja variants, were missing that kind of final gear to knock out something like a Gardevoir EX. You know, you have things like the Dragonite and the Raikou, uh, but those are two prized liabilities. They're not great at every matchup. So you can see where this Galarian Moltres really is a game changer. Having this last single prize Pokemon that makes it so you don't have to put any V or any EX into your deck. It's all single prize Pokemon, but it can deliver that gigantic hit at the end of the game. It's crazy to see the fact that Alex kind of was attacking on two fronts there on that last turn. Forces Cameron to go for the Mana Fee play thanks to that Kyogre. And then with the Collapse Stadium, you just pivot and you have the Glarian Moltres just in your back pocket, ready to go. But I don't think it was on camera, but Cameron did mulligan a hand that had two battle VIP pass, so feels bad. Love to see it, love <laughs> to see it. <laughs> All right, uh, so we're setting up for game number two. I would assume that uh, Cameron will decide to go first in this one. I don't know, what do you think? Is it, I, I, I always assume it's better to go first as the uh, evolution deck, but what do you think? It, I, I agree, but it's always not good when you're going against the Lost Box deck that can just take a knockout with a Cramorant. Yep. It's super easy turn one. Yeah, I could see it go both ways. I think I'm always kind of in favor of going first, but uh, we'll see what Cameron decided to go for here. Looks like lots of basic Pokemon in the opening hand, but no battle VIP pass this time. Oh yeah, they got mulliganed away. Oh, 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 oh they're yeah, going to draw it. Sneak peek. <laughs> Oh, he's Four too good at Four psychic this game. energy in the discard or in the prize card, though. Four of your eleven psychic energy. That yeah, I think he's this... missing one of the the play ones. You know? Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, did as was predicted. Uh, did top deck the veil VIP pass? That was the next card. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you love to see. Yep. Now with this battle VIP pass, Cameron will be able to find two basic Pokemon, put them on the bench couple of Ralts, maybe a Ralts and a Mew, depending on the hand. Taking a look, there's the Manaphy. Yeah, yeah, I think the bad part about this hand is there's no energy. Oh yeah, they're um, all in the prize yeah, cards. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but not having a single energy means, you know, Greninja is not doing anything. You can't retreat into Mew. Uh, yeah, you might have to, like, get Zacian V to the <laughs> Roar of the Sword onto your Ralts so you can retreat to a Mew next turn. <laughs> Doesn't feel great. Uh, I would rather just not have to hear what you said again. So, <laughs> Look, I, I don't like that at all. <laughs> sometimes sometimes games get ugly, all right? <laughs> uh, Alex does start with Snorlax, which is not the greatest Pokemon to start with. Uh, it has a very hefty retreat cost. But, uh, of course, you do play lots of switching cards with this deck. Snorlax is another interesting one. You know, it's one of these single prize Pokemon that can dish out a lot of damage. Uh, I will say 180 is not quite what it used to be, um, but it can be used as an early response to like a Zashian V that's you know taken some damage from uh, Gardevoir's ability. So I don't know, it can find some interesting spots to be used in and sometimes just doing a big chunk of damage can set up a lost mine for later for Sableye. But um, yeah, I mean, it's just another nice attacking option for this deck to have. Listen, Kyle, it's in there for a very specific VMAX Pokemon that I was testing prior to this regionals. Oh, yeah? That is nowhere to be found. Uh, <laughs> it, it's the Dracozolt VMAX. Uh, 
<laughs> it survives a hit, you know? Okay, yep. <laughs> Alex is going to start things off. Kohler's his experiment. You know what else survives? <laughs> Same why, I think. <laughs> no, How much does Drake is old do? It does like 112 damage counters, I think. 80 damage counters. Yeah, but somewhere. only if you do damage to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so if you just drop 12 damage No, they're going to scratch. It. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, All right, Kohler's experiment finds that Radiant Greninja. Radiant Greninja is going to use concealed cards, finds Nest Ball. Nest Ball will grab that Comfey. And as long as Alex has Escape Rope or Switch Cart, can get that Snorlax out of the active spot and start flower selecting, build up that loss zone. 15 minutes left to go in this match. And that, that's probably the worst news for Cameron, is just you don't have enough time. Yeah, um, I mean, obviously, the best of three round is 50 minutes long. If your first game takes 30 minutes, <laughs> uh, you don't have time for another one that takes 30 minutes. I mean, that's just math. But, um, yeah, you're obviously, you're hoping to, if you're in Cameron's position, win a very quick game to try to salvage something out of this round. But, um, you know, as your opponent benches a bunch of Pokemon, you can kind of feel this uh, getting out of oh, reach. Oh, another but, sleeve broken. Oh, no. Devastating. Honestly, the, with the way Alex has started after the EUIC win, I think the only thing stopping him could be broken sleeves. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you're in Cameron's shoes, I think you just got to be hoping for a turn two Gardevoir, try to rush for prize cards early, and just hope things work out in your favor. But um, obviously, Alex got to do everything in his power to uh, not draw dead. <laughs> Clara and Dark Energy were the choices between that flower selecting. Alex chose the... Uh, yeah, Clara. Chose the Clara, yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, we do have Curlia. Couple. Yeah. We do not currently have Psychic Energy in the discard pile. Because they're in the prizes. <laughs> no. <Yep. laughs> so we're going to see that first refinement. Draw two cards. Throws away the Ultra Ball. Ooh. Double Professor's Research <laughs> found. Uh, are there two Gardevoir EX in hand? Yes, yes, there are. Uh, that's pretty bad. You, you cannot research that away. <laughs> Refinement finds Luminion, yeah. Let's see. Uh, that can get you a judge. judge. Uh, it can get you a worker. <laughs> <laughs> Whew. All right. It can get, we've established it can get you a supporter. And I, Ooh, I, hold on. Oh, oh. Shortcut there. Uh, I think they're going to go for Judge, but put their hand on top of their deck immediately and when they play Luminion. Yeah. If there's a Judge in the deck, we're fine. <laughs> if it's prized, we're in, we're we, in some trouble. We know it's not prized. It's fine. Okay. All right. <laughs> Breathing a sigh of relief there. I think it was like the top card, too, which was pretty funny. Yeah. So Luminous Sign will find that judge, shuffle <laughs> both of the players' hands into the decks, draw four cards, and Cameron is hoping for a lot here. Has already refinement twice for the turn. I mean, well, you would need Rick Handy, they can't even Gardevoir, attack. Energy, Energy. Yeah, yeah that you doesn't even, that. No. No? What? You don't have any energy in your discard. That's true. Uh, I guess Psychic, Psychic, Ultra Ball, Rare Candy. That does it. Oh, well, that's none of that. Uh, we got <laughs> another Curlia. You can Refinement. All right, yeah. Uh, and with Fog Crystal, get an energy in the discard. All True. right. We're cooking. Okay. This is not quite a turn two Gardevoir attack, but uh, it's going to set up for a turn three attack. We'll take what we can get at this point. Yeah. <laughs> and I believe that Tord would have gotten a turn two Gardevoir attack. <laughs> We all can't be no, I mean, the best player in the modern <laughs> era right now. All right. Uh, no, I mean, I, I, Cameron, I believe, sequenced everything correctly. It just, it just didn't work out this time. Yeah, some quite unfortunate draws. Finds another Fog Crystal that will get another energy. So, hey, two energy, possibly in the discard as well. Mm. Huh, no, getting attached. <laughs> and we're going to search for another one. We're roaring. Hope things work out for the next turn, but wow, Alex's hand is amazing. <laughs> of course, his experiment, you got that Hisuian Heavy Ball and energy to discard the concealed cards, and sky's the limit. 
Yeah, of note, there was no attack from Alex on that last turn. Um, got four in the Lost Zone, but was unable to put Cramorant into the active, which is a pretty big deal. But I think if you're Alex, you're pretty content to just, you know, keep piling cards into the Lost Zone, hopefully get an attack off this turn. You know, you can knock out a Curlia. That's a pretty good turn. And uh, kind of go from there. Alex opts not to grab that Kumfei from the prizes with that Hisuian Heavy Ball. And we're going to start things off with that Colrus's experiment. Finds another one off the five. You always like to see that. Yep. Haluch is an interesting one. Um, you know, if you can get, like, the insane start, or you get, like, turn two Sableye, uh, Halucha can be devastating to allow you to knock out two Ralts with Lost Mine before they're able to evolve, but... You know, once those evolve up into Curlia, Halucha I don't think really does anything in this matchup, so pretty easy to throw that one away. Flower selecting gets rid of Beach Court for Alex now, up to seven. And there we just see a retreat. We're going to see a spit innocently. Yep, and one Curlia does go down. I mean, that's a pretty big knockout. Now limiting your opponent to just two Curlia. Eventually one will turn into a Gardevoir EX. The other one will probably turn into a regular Gardevoir. But uh, always good to, you know, if you can ever knock out a Curlia, I, uh, I recommend doing it. It's very helpful for improving your chances of winning. <laughs> uh, I'd like to see those percentages. <laughs> Level Ball is going to find maybe the Ralts. You can also grab that Mew with its mysterious tail. Yeah, Ralts makes sense. Don't think you're going to be sending Mew out there this turn. One thing you could also do is we saw the Collapse Stadium in hand, so you mm -hmm. can play the Ralts, play the Collapse Stadium, get rid of that Luminion V. That's right. And there we go. Ralts in the hand. And then with that, you have the research, but we're just researching away. Huh. Thinning the deck out a little bit with that level ball for the Ralts. And a brand new seven cards in hand for Cameron. Still has both refinements. You find a lot of cards you can discard, you know. <laughs> Literally the whole hand is just not really, it's not really useful except for that Forest Seal Stone. <laughs> yeah, hey, that's a good one. Um, opting to Forest Seal Stone before using refinement. Um, I think generally... You prefer to use refinement to, you know, see what you draw, and then you can go search for whatever card you need. Um, like the exception would be, you know, if you want to make sure that you like put a psychic energy in the discard pile, you could like search for the energy and refinement to throw it away, so that you make sure you can use Gardevoir EX. But uh, looks like Cameron is going to opt to you know, go find a card first and maybe like help mentally reframe like how am I going to attack this turn. Um, well, yeah, it does actually use it as an energy search. <laughs> Goes to find a basic psychic energy. Uh, quite funny. Uh, you actually see that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit awkward, but for Seal Stone, half of the time usually just searches for an energy for the turn. <laughs> yeah. It's like when computer search was around and you would computer search for a basic energy. It yeah. always felt bad, but, I mean, part of why computer search is so good is that it could get any card, including basic energy. <laughs> All right, first refinement discards that battle VIP pass, grabs an Ultra Ball and a Miriam from the top of the deck. Ultra Ball will be able to just discard Love of Ball and a battle VIP pass to grab a Gardevoir EX or that Cresselia. Still needs the Gardevoir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now this is the period of time where Cresselia can be annoying to deal with. Uh, Alex does have seven in the Lost Zone, so it's not too much more to get to ten and use Lost Mind. But you know, if this were a situation where Alex like doesn't have another Colrus's experiment in hand, uh, you can attack with Cresselia here. It has 120 HP. Cramorant does not knock it out, and it can be a way to kind of stop the momentum of the Lost Zone deck. All right, two cards that were not useful were found off the top of the deck. <laughs> We're going to retreat two Psychic Energies. That's how you get them in the discard pile. I mean, that oh. is, but no Gardevoir EX. Uh, oh. I don't know if you're able to get them back. 
And oh, yeah. I think Cameron just realized, oh, no, <laughs> I'm missing something. Yeah. I forgot about that part. <laughs> it's because he had two in hand uh, yep. prior, you know, uh, prior to the judge. Yep. Uh, oh, this is rough. Passing yep. of the turn. Alex now has full control. And starting things off with the Colorus's experiment will be getting nine in the loss zone. And oh, that's a little awkward, Colorus's experiment. Yeah, thankfully, I think Alex has a bit of breathing room. <laughs> yeah. After how this is all played out. <laughs> I see the switch cart. Comfey to the active spot. Flower selecting will put Alex to that magic 10 number for these Lost Zone decks. That means Lost Mine is active and available to him. Yeah. In my mind, I envision like a progress bar when you're playing Lost Zone. It's like you get to four, <laughs> it's like 40%. You get to seven, 70%. Once you get to 10, your bar is complete and you can do whatever you want. And those games where you don't find Colrus, it's just stuck at like two. Yeah, yeah. It's like your computer never loaded. Yeah. <laughs> This update's taking forever. <laughs> Gonna have your, that second uh, energy on that Snorlax. Yeah, your uh, Pokemon TCG deck, much like your computer can brick. Escape Rope is going to force Cameron to bring back up that Zacian. Sableye in the active spot now, and Alex doesn't even really need to play anything else. Yeah, um... I guess what do you go after here? I, I still live by my advice of knocking out a Curlia when you can. Looks like Alex agrees. Um, so yeah, I guess that debate's <laughs> over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, like you could go for something like the Manaphy or even just knock out the Cresselia in one hit, but you're in a big advantage point right now in this match. and the more options you can take away from your opponent and limiting their refinements throughout each turn is just better for you in the long run. Oof. Especially with all these battle VIP paths still in the deck. Yep. So we do see Gardevoir. I thought Cameron had Miriam in hand. I mean, if he both did, Gardevoir yeah. EX are in the... No, they're in the deck. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, it was from the hand where... He had double research and then had Illuminion for the judge. Shuffled yeah, him yeah, in. yeah. Yep. So, yeah. Uh, Jeremy, I think as the Gardevoir EX deck, <laughs> it tends to be very difficult to win when you don't get Gardevoir EX into play, in my experience. It's a little hard. <laughs> oh, yeah. Especially when you're going to bench down these Ralts. They're going to get eaten up by that Sableye. <laughs> yep. Uh, it, it, it's not a good time, I must tell you, especially seeing three of them in the discard already. Yep. Uh, and if, you know, Alex obviously is playing very well. If uh, But if this is how it's going to go for him all the time, he's going to win every tournament for, <laughs> forever. <laughs> it must be nice. You, you break the curse, finally win an event, and then you just never lose again. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. Miriam is going to shuffle up those Pokemon. Cameron's going to draw three cards, hope to find something, I guess. Cards? Yeah. I mean, the awkward part now is if you draw a Gardevoir EX, you can't evolve into it because you've already committed to the regular oh, no. Gardevoir. Battle VIP pass yet again. <laughs> yep. Yep. And, I mean, the unfortunate part... By retreating Zacian V last turn, now it doesn't have enough energy to even attack. So there's not even an attack you can pull off here. Oh, a second Zacian V. Here we go. Listen, you got to do what you got to do. Search your deck for an energy. Is there even one left? Oh. There is one. Uh, well, I hope this Zacian V can take six knockouts because there's no energy left. <laughs> uh... Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. And there's no Gardevoir EX. So you can't get the energy back. That, uh, that there's also, the deck works. There's yeah. also four energy in the prizes, right? Yeah, that's where you get your energy. You, yeah, you yeah. start taking prizes oh, to grab yeah. energy. Yeah. Boss's oh, orders. Well, this is just rude. Oh, that, uh, are we going for the deck out <laughs> plan now? I mean, you can strand something active and then lost mine. 
Just pick apart the bench. So eight goes on to the that Cresselia to finish it off. And you know, at this point, you can kind of just announce whatever attacks you want if you're Alex. They're uh probably gonna win no matter what. Scratch. As long as you don't scratch, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Spinning attack. Yeah. If you just like announced lost mine and then threw dice randomly onto your opponent's Pokemon, I think you might still win. I would love to see that, yeah. honestly. <laughs> yeah. We'll let the dice decide where the damage goes. <laughs> Whichever Pokemon card it touches, it's now damaged. <laughs> yep. Palpad for Cameron here is going to shuffle back in the Miriam and the Penny. Yep. The Penny's the only way this Ashin is moving. Or the Judge. All right, Judge and Penny. We're going to hope to draw that Penny off of uh, the Shining Arcana that we already used. Yep. All right. It's it's not looking good, Kyle. <laughs> there is only five seconds left. Uh, also <laughs> true, yes. Yep. Uh, so currently, oh, this Sashi <laughs> and V here has uh, two retreat costs, and, uh, well, there's no energy left, so, okay. Well, that's going to wrap it up. Time has been called, and Alex Shemansky will get the victory and move on to 6-0. and oh. Not a bad way to follow up your EUIC <laughs> championship victory. Must be nice. Uh, just showing the consistency uh, of, yeah, I can take down one of the biggest tournaments that we've ever had, and I'm going to try to do it again in two weeks with a different deck. Yep. Same meta. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but, I mean, this speaks to Alex as a player as well, uh, is willing to constantly adapt to the metagame, you know. I think that's a trait a lot of top players share. Uh, they don't stick to just one thing. Uh, well, I mean, there, there's one testing group that just keeps playing Lost Box. But besides that, <laughs> uh, you know, being able to recognize that, you know, the metagame changes. This time, this deck is the best one. Uh, and for Alex's case, recognizing that, hey, the deck that I won with might not be the best choice anymore for this particular tournament. So I'm going to bring something else and... Seems like uh, these days it doesn't really matter what he's playing. He just wins anyway. Yeah, and still Cameron is not out of it. Five, yeah. one, one more win, and then a tie can lock up day two. So yeah. still a little bit of work, but the the bones are there, you know. I would say that's a pretty tough matchup for Gardevoir. Uh, Lost Box is already kind of a hard matchup for Gardevoir. Um, just, you know, they have so many options for spreading damage, knocking out your little Pokemon, and then you add in the fact that they can Galarian Moltres at the end of the game. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's just going to be a rough one. Yeah, and Alex kind of played it perfectly and was hoping to guess the meta. He's like, wow, yeah, towards Gardevoir deck was pretty good. I think a lot of people are going to try to play it. Yeah. Uh, might as well play a deck that is really pushing to counter it. <laughs> yeah, so uh, congrats to Alex on a perfect start so far, 6-0. Can almost guarantee that we're going to see him tomorrow in day number two. Uh, like you said, you need 19 match points to make it to day two. At this point, maybe Alex is going to shoot for the full nine and zero. Oh and you, you got to, yeah. right? You, you <laughs> always got to go for it. Yeah. Uh, if you lose the next one, maybe things get a little bit. Maybe I'll tie and then try to win the next <laughs> one. Go seven one one. Yeah. Uh, we'll have to see. But with a deck like Lost Box, anything can happen. Definitely. But uh, this is looking like a strong deck choice for uh, the current metagame. It's got options to beat just about anything. It's got, uh, you know what, I kind of consider like the the last ditch effort, like Kyogre. There's a lot of situations where it looks like you're not going to win, but I mean, in some matchups, you can just randomly get like a four prize turn off an Aqua Storm. There could just be five energy on the top of your deck randomly, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, randomly. <laughs> uh, but like that gives you a big comeback option as well. Like there's not too many Pokemon in the current metagame that give you that option to be like, this is one attack that's gonna like completely swing the game. 